Hello and welcome to episode two of the Big Bash Show for the 2011-2012 KFC T20 Big Bash League season. My name is Shura Taft and on this show we're going to be tackling all the big issues to do with the Big Bash. We're going to get you guys, the fans at home, involved and have a little bit of fun along the way while we do it. But I'd like to introduce you to my co-host for the show from the age. It's uh, Mr. Jesse Hogan. Jesse, welcome. And uh, round one's off and running. Some big results. Both Melbourne teams losing and Sydney teams winning. Yeah, I guess if you look at the first week, it was probably the only underwhelming things, I guess, were some of the crowds and I guess some of the one-sided results, but some of the individual performances were just exceptional. So from that perspective, I think, yeah, the first week was a success. So let's go through a few of them. Who were the big ones, of course? There's obviously one massive one. Yeah, obviously, well, Saturday night I was there at the MCG seeing David Warner and the amazing thing about it is that he started in the field as well, even before he made his amazing century. But I think it was the lesser lights for the Thunder, like guys like Scott Coit and Dan Doran who did really well with the ball that really put them over the really high-profile stars. Any other sort of performances from the, uh, the imports as well? Of the imports, I think the best undoubtedly was Johan Boda from the Strikers. They lost their biggest import um, in the days before Kyron Pollard, but he was exceptional and uh, I think the Strikers were the really big winners out of week one. And disappointing start for both Melbourne teams as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, if you look at the, the stars, you look at their depth, you think that they're due to come back. Probably the other bigger probably, uh, problem, I think, would be the Renegades. They've got a high-risk, high-reward strategy. And so far yesterday at the Adelaide Oval, it really didn't come off. So they're going to have to lot to prove this week at the Etihad. Well, we've seen some big hitting. We've seen some spin work mm -hmm. as well. And after round one, it's Adelaide on top. And unfortunately for Melbourne, it's the Renegades right down on the bottom. Now every week we are going to have a segment called Who's Hot or Who's Not based on the performances of the players in the KFC T20 Big Bash League official fantasy game. And this week uh, the hot player we're going to start with is a man who smashed 102 not out and that is David Warner. Jesse, how good was he? It was just exceptional and I think we saw the first hints of what he was likely to produce uh, in the field that night. Two great catches and a crucial run out, long flat throw from the outfield to get rid of David Hussey who was the star's best batsman. And there, from there, once he had a bat, it was just typically extraordinary from him. I was lucky enough to be down in Hobart about a week ago seeing him make his debut, test cent make his maiden test century. And this time, although the strike rate was even higher, like about 50-odd balls, just the way he was going so crisply through the shots was just really demoralising for all the Stars bowlers and great to watch. So for the people out there who are playing the fantasy game, obviously a player like Warner is important because not only is he making runs, he's having an impact in the field as yeah. well. Do you have him in your fantasy team? Oh, well, I sort of try to look for a long-term view and think, well, just because he's so good in test, he mightn't actually be able to be around <laughs> anymore. So if you've got him in our week, Wayne, he'll certainly be, uh, pay, have a big benefit of it. Obviously, the biggest score out there. There were some other great scores. Klinger was fantastic. Um, obviously, uh, Maxwell as well. So obviously, get those guys in your team as soon as possible. But there are some players who probably didn't perform to their, uh, to their usual standards. Of course, the options, Chris Gar wasn't great. Mm. Cameron White didn't have a fantastic innings. Mike Hussey, anyone for you? Not hot. I guess probably the big losers when you look out of week one would be the Melbourne Renegades. I guess they've got the high risk, high reward strategy and you think if things go well, having Sean Tate and Doug Nannis opening the bowling, it'd be fantastic for them. But if you look on the weekend, I think they conceded 79 runs from the six overs mm. and especially Tate, he's the you know, one of the most formidable T20 bowlers in the world. When it all clicks, it's fantastic. And when it doesn't, I guess we saw that uh, yesterday when he just gets dispatched for, I think, 40 run runs off three overs. So he's going to have a lot to prove this week. So Sean Tate, a big week. We're hoping seeing him skittle the wickets. Don't forget, you can get involved in the fantasy game, get to the Big Bash uh, website, because, of course, you can have a share in over $20,000 worth in prize. In fact, $10,000 to the winner. But more importantly, every week, the best highest score team gets $500, so definitely worth having someone like David Warner in your team, if you can afford him. <laughs> Otherwise, look for the long-term options like Jesse did. Now, each week we're going to get you guys, the fans at home, involved as well and give you the chance to ask any questions you want to our resident expert, Jesse Hogan. All you have to do is make sure when you tweet, use the hashtag BigBashShow. Now, this week's first tweet is from at Rudy Lorai, who says, and he's actually tweeted to Usman Kawaja as well, what's going on, Uzi? Got to come better than that at the crease, son. Jesse, do you agree? I've seen, and to watch a lot of him in Test Cricket, and even though he hasn't really kicked on yet, I've seen a lot of things in Test Cricket about his technique that thinks he would be well suited to it. Yet to really see it in T20. I know he spent a lot of time out of the New South Wales team before the Big Bash um, last season. Didn't manage to get one score in the limited overs, but yeah, he's... 
I don't see any natural signs from him that he's going to be able to kick on at number three for the Thunder. And probably best thing for him is if he's actually in the test side and not available for it. <laughs> interesting, interesting thoughts right there. Okay, our second tweet is from at Michael in Queensland who says, Magilla and Warney are in form. India are a force. If you're a selector, would you be chasing them for a run in the test team? If I was a selector, I wouldn't be selecting. That's not to discount them at all. I think uh, Magilla in particular was one of the stories of week one, bowled beautifully and Particularly that ball he got to, to dismiss Matthew Hayden was an absolute ripper. But I think that you look at the test team at the moment, Nathan Lyons doing a superb job, sort of come from nowhere. And while both McGiller and Warren didn't look out of place in week one of the BBL, I think I'd be sticking sticking with them in the coloured clothes and not the whites. Well, let's be honest, McGiller, probably the most unlucky man in test cricket in history because he'd be playing <laughs> yeah. a lot more games had Warren not been around. Interesting to see how he would have gone if T20 was, was around when he was back then. But of course, as you said, it's great to see them having a run around. Probably not. For the test team now, we, we wish the best for that. Nathan yeah. Lyon, remember if you want to tweet any questions for Jesse to answer, remember when you do your tweet, hashtag Big Bash Show. Well, that's it for this week's show. Got to thank our resident expert, Jesse. Thanks for coming in. No worries. See you soon. Looking forward to the next round of games. Make sure you get along to the KFC 2020 Big Bash. The next games are Brisbane Heat taking on the Melbourne Stars at the Gabba. That's on December 20. Then the Hobart Hurricanes taking on the Sydney Sixers at Blundstone Arena on December 21. Should be a cracker. Melbourne Renegades want to get off to a good start after losing their first game against the Perth Scorchers. That's at Etihad Stadium on the 22nd of December. And then the Sydney Thunder taking on the Adelaide Strikers. Two winning teams at ANZ Stadium on December 23. And remember, anything you want to ask us on the show, make sure you tweet with the hashtag BigBashShow. For any other information, get to the website. That's BigBash.com.au. But for now, we'll be back on your screens on Christmas Eve. That's December 24 with all the action from round two. Until then, take care.